So today we'll be discussing about bolted connections third part uh, because in earlier lectures we have been discussing about uh, uh, connections subjected to either tension or shear. So, but in this problems, today's problems that we'll be discussing, we'll be seeing bolted connections subjected to combined shear as well as tension. Okay. So, if you could just look at the uh, figure here, we have uh, the important pages have been marked here, and then if you look into uh, these equations, there is something that we need to understand before we approach the problems. Now, you know that in a bearing type of connection, uh, you usually write the equation as phi rn is equal to phi fnt ab. That's it. Now, but in the case of a combined shear and tension problem, we modify this value, this tension value of nt, okay? We call it fnt prime. That fnt prime is calculated using this particular equation. So what we understand is due to the effect of shear, the capacity of the bolt in tension decreases. But that decrement, that decrease, that decreased value of fnt is called fnt prime. So you will see that if from this equation it is clear, from this equation it is clear that f n t prime is less than or equal to f n t, which means it's a reduced value, and that reduction is influenced by uh, the shear acting on it, and that shear, the effect of shear is considered using this term f n v or I think f r v as mentioned in your textbook. So this term actually considers uh, the shear acting in it, the shear acting, and that shear causes the FNT to decrease to a value called FNT prime. Okay. Now that is the case of a bearing type connection. What about the case? This is this is about bearing type of connection. Now what about a slip critical type of connection? In slip critical type of connection, you know from previous discussions that in slip critical connection, the load is essentially a shear. The load is carried through shear because it's acting between the plates and then uh, it, it is transferred through shear. So in this case, what we do is we have a term called KSC, which was not present in our previous discussions. KSC was not present, but here something called KSC, which actually considers the effect of tension. So th this is the other way around. Here, this is shear, and the effect of tension is is considered using this term called KSC. I hope you understand the difference. In the first, uh, in 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 bearing type of friction, what we did was we had uh, considered the, uh, the reduction in FNT because of the shear through a term called FNV, and we have a reduced value of FNT called FNT prime. But in the case of slip critical connection, we consider this this is actually capacity in terms of shear. So shear is reduced by a term called KSC. And this KSC is calculated, uh, is dependent on the tension acting. Okay, so as we progress through the problems, I hope the idea will be clear to you. So we have two problems today. Uh, the first problem involves, uh, if you could take a look at the picture, you'll see that determine the number of bolts. It's a design, so it is a determine the number of bolts in standard size holes with diameter three and a half a uh, three fourth inch an a325 type of connection uh the tu the ultimate value of u is 182 and the ultimate shear is given as 106 kips now you have to design both a bearing type of connection as well as a slip critical type of connection 
Now, uh, I just want you guys to go through this picture. You see that your FU, FY is given. Then your thickness of the flange, TF is given. Uh, and then uh, the edge distance is given as 2 inches. So if you could take a look at uh, the first part of the solution, as we discussed earlier, is the layout of layout of bolts. Layout of bolts. Now, layout of bolt involves uh, essentially the spacing limitations. We go through the spacing limitations as well as the edge distance. Now, we know this from previous studies that is spacing, minimum spacing is three times diameter and the maximum spacing is minimum of 12 times T or six inches. And uh, we have, we can choose one in this case, we have chosen three inches so that it is within the limits. Now, in this case, the edge distance has been given to you. So what you have to just do is make sure that it is within the limits. So for a 3 4 inch bolt, the minimum edge distance is 1 inch. And the maximum edge distance is the minimum of this one. So what we have what had taken in the question is 2 inches. So it is within the limits, which means it's OK. Now, the next part of the problem is to calculate uh, is we are starting off with the bearing type of connection now we calculate the capacity of the bolt uh, in direct shear okay so uh, the capacity of bolt is treated using this equation v f v r n v is equal to v f n v a b this is taken from the manual a b can be calculated v is 0.75 because it's LRFD. We are following LRFD design. So your fee RNV is 22.5. And we have also the AB value is times one because we have only because it is single shear. If it is if it was double shear, we would have taken uh, two planes. Now the next uh strength that we need to calculate is the capacity of the bolt uh, due to bearing uh, and you are familiar with this equation that is available in the manual this lc is calculated from uh, the edge distance minus half times diameter this is a which is given to you in the question so uh, this problem is given otherwise we'll have to find from the limitations that's uh, available in the code so this is le minus half time half the diameter is half inch. Um, and if you also notice that the W shape, the, the, the TF value of the column is not given. We are only available with the thickness value of the WT, the TF of the WT, which is actually carrying the, uh, the load. Uh, the FU value is 65, D is 3 fourth of an inch. We substitute the values into this, so we get the capacity of the bolt in bearing is 54.84, so which means that this one controls. The capacity of the bolt uh, in, shear, uh, in, in bearing is, uh, 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 the capacity of the bolt in due to direct shear is 22.5. Now, what we do is, since it involves both type of connection, uh, we actually, uh, if we remember from previous discussions, what we do here is we analyzed the capacity from this shear acting. Now we go into the, cap uh, the capacity of the bolts in tension. We deal with them separately. Okay. And then we consider the effect of TU on the uh, effect of shear on the other according to the type of uh, connection that's involved. So we check the capacity of the bolts in shear. Now we check the capacity of the bolts in because of the tension. Now the capacity of the bolt in tension is calculated from the manual. We have this equation V F N T V R N T equals V F N T times A B. V is 0.75. F N T is available in the manual. 
uh, now this is I think A325 uh, uh, for the A325 the value of uh, FNT is 90 KSI and then uh, AB is just the uh, A of the bolt you substitute these values you get the capacity of the bolt in tension okay so now we need to start off with an estimate number of bolts because we don't know there is no equation given to you in the manual to start off I mean to estimate the number of bolts we have to do it based on uh, an assumption that we'll be discussing now now if you take a look at the picture like take a look at the question the TU the ultimate uh, tension is 182 and the ultimate shear is 106 now based on these uh, values we estimate the number of bolts required so the first step is the number of bolts based on shear which is actually bu divided by phi rn v So VU is 106 divided by the capacity of bolt in uh, capacity of the uh, of the bolt due to direct shear. This is what we found. This is given to us, and this one is what we found earlier. So according to this assumption, assume that there is only shear. We require 4.7 bolts. Now this is part of the estimate. Now. Calculate the number of bolts based on tension only. So we have the TU value as 182 and the capacity of tension that we just found before this step is 29.8. So we get the number of bolts based on that assumption. So together when you read together, to give, when you read together, you require more than six bolts. You now if you say 6.1, we cannot start off i mean we can start off with by assuming six number of bolts but you know that the tension is influenced by the effect of shear so if you start off with six, it, it would probably not work out so let's start off with a higher value let's start off with eight number of bolts okay i hope you understand because six if you start off with six number of bolts it's highly probable that you'll fail because six is based on the assumption that there is tension only the strength of the bolt is reduced because of the effect of shear. So that means six will not probably work. So we'll have to start off with a higher number of bolts. So let's start off with eight number of bolts. Now I've given the reason why we start off with a higher number. You can very well try yourself and you'll find that it will not work. So then we proceed. We are going to use this equation we are going to use the capacity equation which is phi rn is equal to phi oops, phi f n t prime a b we know a b we know phi but we need to find phi n t prime so phi n t prime as we discussed earlier it is a reduced value of f n t it is lesser than FNT. It would probably be less than FNT because it considers the effect of shear. Okay. Now to find FNT prime, we usually use this equation. This is available in the manual. Okay. And in that FNT is known, FNT is known, FNV is known, but we need to find FRV. Now to find FRV, we have this equation. FRV equals It is available to you in the manual, but let's see what FRV equals. Uh, I'm sorry, I have not written it down here. So let's look at the manual. Uh, I would uh, suggest you all to open the manual to page. Uh, let me just open it.
एफ आर वी एफ आर वी आई थिंक इट इज इट इज नॉट अवेलेबल इन द मैनुअल बट इट इज समथिंग दैट कैन बी फाउंड दैट इज एफ आर वी इज वी यू डिवाइडेड बाई एन ए बी ओके विच इज जस्ट द शेयर पर बोल्ट ओके सो द शेयर पर बोल्ट we know that the value of vu is 106 it is given to us n we found we assumed the n to be 8 and b is 0.44 that is the area of the bolt so when you plug in these values you find that the value of frv is 30 ksi okay so now we are in a position to substitute all the values to find fnt prime find fnt prime we need fnt which is 90 we have fnt here then phi frv fnv and when we n phi fnv is also available in the manual phi is 0.75 90 is the same as fnt and this frv which is substituted the value so we see that the capacity of of the bolt in tension the strength of the bolt in tension is reduced because of the effect of shear we get a reduced value of fnt uh called fnt prime so the value of fnt is actually 90 ksi but when you do the uh when you try to calculate the value of fnt you see that it is less than 9 so now we can find the number of bolts using this equation that is you are you are essentially dividing this is tu and this is the capacity of the bolt it is a reduced capacity of the bolt that is phi r and t uh, it is the reduced value from phi fnt prime ab so this value is here so this is capacity of one bolt it is the reduced capacity of one bolt reduced tension capacity you can say of one bolt so when you substitute these values you get the required number of bolts as 8.57 which is higher than what you assumed which means that your design is not okay like if you assume eight number of bolts it is still not okay so the next guess that we, that we can do is to add two because we are having two lines of bolts and we are not going by a staggered arrangement we are going by a grid arrangement so so the next possible uh value of n is 10 so we repeat the steps we calculate the value of frv this is vu over n times ab so we find the value of frv as 24 ksi we can substitute the value of frv into f prime which is the reduced value of fnt and you get the 74.64 which is less than fnt fnt is 90 ksi so when you plug in these values this is as we discussed earlier it's tu and this is phi rnt you can say it's the reduced value is equal to phi uh, f n t prime ab and you get 7.36 which is less than 10 which means it's okay so our design so if you use for this type of connection we use uh 10 number of bolts uh so that's the end of the design so we use 10 number of bolts following edge distance as well as the spacings now since it is uh subjected to tension as well it is subjected to shear we have to still find the capacity uh we have to check the block shear strength okay and this is very familiar to you since we have the arrangement the layout of the bolts we can easily find agv anv and nt and we substitute the equation substitute into the values and we see uh, your the shear uh, block shear strength is 370 which is higher than 106 kips that is the shear force this is the vu which means your design is okay okay
the arrangement is okay. In case it does not work, you can slightly increase the spacing that we had chosen. So that would probably uh, pass. So the next type of connection that we'll be dealing with is slip critical type of connection. So the same problem, assuming that you need a slip critical type of connection. So you're familiar with this equation from previous lectures. So the only additional term that has come is KSC. Okay. No, no. KSC is calculated using this equation, which is given to you in the manual. This is given to you in the manual. If you look into page, uh, I would open it to page. page 16.127 uh, so you can take a note of this it's, it's on page 16.1 page 127 now you might be aware of all these terms your fee is 0.1 your mu is 0.3 which is class a which is class b it will be uh, if, it's, if it is class B, it would be 0.5. The DU is 1.13. HF is 1. Uh, the minimum pretension TB is available to you in the manual. That is 28 kips. Now, what we need to find is KSC. To find KSC, as I discussed earlier, the effect of the, the use of KSC is to find like a reduction factor. To consider the effect of tension okay and when you get this ksc and plug into the equation the capacity of the bolt uh, of the slip critical type of connection decrease per bolt so the effect of tension is considered in this form here so it is one minus ksc is one minus tu over du times tb times nb now TU is 182. We know that from the question. DU is available in the manual. TB is available in the manual. Now, NB is the number of bolts in tension. Okay. Now, that depends upon the number of total number of bolts you're using. Suppose you're using, uh, say, Uh, suppose you're using uh, now in this case this is direct tension the total uh, the number of the value of nb is going to be 12 because all of those is subjected to tension okay now if you're talking about something like extra eccentric shear you see that not all the bolts are subjected to tension only part of it is subjected to tension okay in this problem however since it is subjected to direct tension you can see that all uh, the bolts that we assume in this case i'm just telling eight of them but according to the assumption we'll find that there are there is a particular number of bolts that you require and you see that all the bolts will be in tension. That is because it is a direct tension. Now, if you have an indirect tension or eccentric tension, you'll see that some of the bolts will be subjected to tension while others won't be. So the first assumption to start off, we need to find the number of bolts uh, because we need NB for, for, for a number of reasons. We need to find the number of bolts to start off. Now the first assumption that we did before, just like we did before, here we assume that the value of KSC is one. That is, it is that is the number of bolts required based on shear only. That is, we don't have, we don't consider the effect of tension. And that is when you consider when you don't when you want to neglect the effect of tension, you give TU is equal to zero, which means KSC is equal to one. Now. When you consider the value of KC as one, 
and you sub you substitute all the other constants this term would become okay i have a question when do we use mu is equal to 0.5 so if you look at the manual on page uh, just open to slip critical type of connection when you open slip critical type of connection on page uh, 16.1 page 16.1126 you'll see that mu can take two values mu is equal to 0.3 or mu is equal to 0.5 now this depends upon mu is basically the coefficient of friction okay so mu depends upon the type the the, the type of the surface that is subject to slip critical type of slip critical type of connection so the surface if the surface is called class a surface the code describes there is an explanation for class a what does class a mean for example class a means unpainted clean mill scale steel surfaces or surfaces with class a coatings of blast clean sand or hot dipped uh, blast clean steel or hot dipped galvanized and roughened surfaces so for that type of connection the value of for that type of surface which is called class a the value of mu is 0.3 while uh, the code describes class B as unpainted blast clean steel surfaces or surfaces with class B coatings on blast clean steels, the value of mu is taken as 0.5. I hope it is this type of surface is called class A and this is called class B. So that really depends upon uh, the question that's given to you. If the question demands you to use class B, you will have to go with 0.5. For the value of mu so we assume so as let's continue so let's we assume that the value of ksc is equal to one this is just to estimate the number of bolts okay just to start off we, we are in the dark now so just uh, to get a number of bolts we need to assume we need to make some crude assumptions so that we get aware about of the number of bolts so yeah, in, the, in this question, it says class A. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I have mentioned it in the beginning, but that's why I used 0.3. So the number of bolts can thus be calculated using this equation, uh, which is um, basically you're dividing the shear VU over uh, the capacity of the slip critical type of connection, VU over the capacity of critical type of connection for rn and you get 11.3 which can be rounded to 12 volts so you can say that you can we can start off with six bolts per vertical line so you get a total of 12 number of bolts what i mean sorry so what i mean is you can start off with Twelve number of bolts. That is, you have six number of bolts per vertical line. Okay, so therefore you can calculate the value. Now you are in a position to calculate the value of KSC because you are aware of the number of bolts. Now, since it is a direct tension, the value of NB number of bolts in tension equals twelve. I hope this idea is clear. Now, if it is an eccentric tension that's acting on it, you know from previous discussions that it will cause a moment and that moment will uh, that moment will cause some of the bolts to be in tension while some of the bolts won't just act it won't be under tension so the number of bolts in tension in this problem is 12 because it is a direct tension i mean the tension that's acting on it is in the form of a direct tension so the number of all 12 bolts that you assumed are subjected to tension so you get a value of KSC and you see that the KSC is less than one, which means it is a reduction factor. Now you substitute the value of KSC into the into this equation. And when you substitute the value of KSC, you get a reduced value of for the capacity. This is 4.93 kip per bolt. Okay. So when you now when you divide the ultimate shear VU. With this number, you see that the number of bolts required is 21.5, which is higher than 12 that you assumed. 
so which means assumption is not correct you need more number of pulls so i have gone further i'm not repeating all of them i tried 14 bolts which means 7 bolts per line so you get the number of bolts at 18.96 uh, which is greater than 14 you can skip these for example like if you, if, if you see that the diff is very high you can skip like you can skip 14 16 and probably you can go into 19 I mean 18 in this case I have tried 18 where it finally worked so you can use nine number of bolts per line you substitute the values to find KSC check the capacity you see that the number of bolts required is 16 which is less than 18 that you had initially assumed so which means that this is the final design so you need if you're using a slip critical type of connection you require nine bolts per vertical line Now the next part, uh, so next problem is uh, uh, is tension from bending as well as shear. So this involves. This is uh, tension from bending and shear, and this involves the calculation of a term called R ultimate shear, ultimate tension. The ultimate shear is calculated from uh, the, from P U or N, which what you're basically doing is you're transferring this load to the so this P is transferred from this point to this point, which is P that we know earlier and we also will have a moment that accompanies it this moment equals m e i mean p e okay this is from mechanics as we discussed earlier suppose you have a load p you want to move it to somewhere else for example you want to move it by a distance e then you would have force p over here made by a moment called with the value of p e p times e okay so uh, these are the things that we require RUV, which is just the shear per bolt. The shear per bolt should be less than the capacity. And RUT is AB times FT. Uh, you see that F, uh, F, the value of stress is MY over I. So this a b a b cancels off so ultimately you have to find r u t as m y times uh, sigma y i square and that should be less than uh, phi r and t so we will go through a problem and this part would be clear to you so just we are going to do the this problem that is you have a WT connected onto a, a W shape connected on the flange. You have to find the number of bolts that's required. You have a shear, an eccentric shear acting at a distance of E. So let's see what are given. We have you are given an ultimate load of 92.8. The value of E is 8 inch, so which means P which is equals which equals 92.8 K and this E equals 8 inch and the vertical spacing you have been told to take 3 inches and you have to check you have to design both types of connections that is A325 X as well as A325 SC with class A surface so the first part of the design that we usually follow is to find the layout of bolts now in this case uh, s has been given to you we can do this to make sure that the, uh, that it is within the limits so here it is within limits which means it's okay and the edge distance uh, I think it is not given it is not given to us so 
uh, we'll just check the limitations. The max minimum edge distance is 1.125 and the maximum edge distance is six inches. Now let's design the bearing type of connection. The bearing type of connection, you know that we usually check both. We check the capacity of the bolt in shear and the capacity of bolt in bearing. Okay, so in shear, you have FNV, uh, you know this, your phi R and V equals phi FNV times AB, FNV equals 68 KSI, AB uh, is the area of the bolt and phi is 0.75, so you can find the capacity of the bolt uh, in shear and again, we have only one shear plane, so therefore the area of AB is just pi by 4 D square. If there, there would have two planes of shear, this would be twice of it. And the capacity of the bolt, I'm sorry. Okay, I have not calculated the capacity in bearing because the thickness of the connected parts are not given. So I've just skipped this, okay? Because bearing involves uh, values like LC uh, and then thickness the thickness details have not been given so we we just go by this value okay I mean this is not bearing this is a mistake this is in tension okay that is phi R N equals phi FNT AB so the phi value is 0.75 FNT is 90 KSI and AB is 0.6 inch square so we find the capacity of the bolt in tension so you have calculated the capacity of the bolt in shear and you have found that it is 30.6 kips and the kip per bolt and the number of uh, and the capacity of the bolt in tension that is 40.5 kips per bolt so the next is to estimate the number of bolts So the number of bolts based on shear is calculated by just PU divided by the capacity of the bolt in shear, which equals three. The number of bolts in tension is calculated. We know that from previous discussions that this N equals, that is the number of bolts per vertical line equals six M divided by RS. Now the M is, uh, is defined as the moment per vertical line. Now the moment is what? P times E. The P is, that is PU is 92.8 kips and the value of E is 8 inch. And the number of shear planes that we have, and the number of uh, lines of poles we have, the problem is two. So 92.8 times eight divided by two. So we have 371.2 kip inch per line. Now the capacity of the bolt in tension, which is R, is phi R and T, which equals 40.6 kip per bolt. And the spacing is taken as three inches. We substitute all of these values and we have an assumption. We have an estimate number of bolts as 4.28. Now let's start uh, solving with this assumption, 4.28. Let's try four bolts per vertical line, which means you have a total of eight bolts. This is four over here and four over here. So, so now the capacity of the bolts, uh, now we see, we check the shear on each bolt. Shear on each bolt is RUV, which is 92.8, which is just VU, the ultimate shear over the number of bolts that we just assumed. So we have eight number of bolts. So the, the shear on each bolt is 11.6 uh, kips, which is less than the capacity in shear. So this is okay. okay. Now this is the design that we've been talking about. And then we find the capacity uh, in, in tension. And for that, we need this term called FNT prime. To find FNT prime, we have to calculate the value of FRV. Okay. 
so fnt prime is 1.3 fnt minus fnt over phi fnv frv now frv 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 equals ruv times ab that is the shear acting uh, the shear acting on each bolt that we discussed earlier that is uh, it is 11.6 kips by the number of area you get the stress you the stress on each bolt uh, due to shear is 19.3 ksi so fnt prime can be calculated using this equation where 1.3 this is fnt we know fnt we know fnt over here this is fnv we know the value of fnv we know phi and the value of frv is calculated from here now if you recall from the previous problem we have we had frv equals uh, vu over n ab now this is not different because we found the value of vu over n over here already that is f that is ruv ruv is what it is the shear uh, per bolt shear in shear force in each bolt when you divide by the force by the cross sectional area you get the stress so here you found ruv already that is why this ruv equals vu over n which we found already and then ab is 0.6 uh, inch square so you get the capacity when you find when you substitute all these values you get that the fnt value has reduced from 90 to 82.88 so this uh, is this reduced value of stress now let's see what is the tension in the most critical bolt now we've, we have found the reduced capacity of tension and now we need to find the tension that's acting in the topmost bolt the topmost the tension acting in the topmost bolt is calculated using this equation we just discussed earlier okay this is ultimate tension in the bolt and that equals m y m is what p times e and y is 4.5 because of this vertical arrangement okay we had eight bolts each is separated by a distance of three spacing so the topmost bolt which is uh, under maximum tension is at a distance of 4.5 inches so when you substitute those values and sigma y i square we discussed y i square earlier it is 4 times 1.5 inch square plus 4.5 inch square if you want to just recollect you see that there are four bolts that is separated from the centroid by 1.5 inch square so 1.5 inch square plus 1.5 inch square plus 1.5 inch square plus 1.5 inch, inch square gives which gives you four times 1.5 inch square similarly you have four bolts which are 4.5 uh, uh, inches away so when you substitute all these values, you get the value of um, uh, the value as uh, 4.5 inch square. That is 4 times 1.5 inch square plus 4.5 inch square. When you plug in all these values, you get the value, the maximum tension that's occurring uh, in the most critical bolt is 37.12. So now we have to find the capacity of the bolt in tension. The capacity of the bolt in tension is phi fnt times ab phi fnt is the reduced value ab is 0 0.6 you see that the capacity of the bolt is 3 37.3 kips per bolt which is higher than the capacity i mean the higher than the load acting on the higher than the tension acting on the topmost bolt which means it is safe so you can you use four number of bolts per vertical line which is this with this facing and an edge distance of 1.5 so that was the design now for slip critical type of connection 
you have this equation okay since it is a case of combined tension and shear you have to find the value of ksc to find the value of ksc you need to have you need to find the value of tu and you, you need the number of bolts required number of bolts in tension now let's go through each of these terms you know phi you know uh, mu you know du you know hf tb is available in the manual number of shear planes is one now here we need to find the value of ksc we know the value of uh, you need you know the value of i mean you can estimate the value of tu the ultimate uh, tension and then uh, du this tension arrive this tension comes from the moment that's acting on the bolt okay in this case for example in this problem we just have one uh, shear eccentric shear acting here you converted this eccentric shear into a, no, uh, a direct shear as well as a moment this moment has caused a tension here suppose you had besides this shear you also had a tension acting here this would add up to the add to this i mean this moment has caused a shear and also this i mean this moment has caused a tension in this bolt now this tension would also add to this okay so so the first assumption is to assume that there is no t that we assume the value of k is 1 Okay, when you assume the value of Kc as one, this would become one, and therefore the value of phi R n will become thirteen point two. And when you substitute this value, uh, this is the shear acting divided by thirteen point two. You get seven number of bolts. Now let's assume that we require eight number of bolts. Okay, so you need to find the value of R u. i think r u t which is m u times sigma i y uh, sigma y i square m is p times e the, the uh, since the range is eight number of bolts this maximum and you have a spacing of 3 inch the maximum is located at 4.5 inches so you substitute 4.5 here and y i square as we discussed earlier you get a value of the maximum tension is 30 37.12 So now you you are in a position to find Ksc. Okay, you, in place of Tu, you substitute the value uh, as thirty-seven point one two. You plug in all the values. Uh, now in this problem, you see that this is this Nb. This is Du Hf. I mean, this is Du Tb, and this is Nb. Nb is the number of bolts in tension. Now you see that in this problem, there are four number of bolts in tension because of the moment acting. These four bolts uh, are not in tension. Okay, so therefore you have the value of N B S four. So when you substitute all these values, you get a value of K S C S point seven nine, which is less than one. Okay, so now we are in a position to substitute the value of K C into uh, this equation. You get. 13.2 times Kc, you get a value of 10.43. Uh, this is the shear. Okay. Now the shear per bolt is 92. This is the uh, the shear acting divided by the number of bolts A, which is less than the load acting. So the capacity, the capacity, is less than the load. so which is not okay so which means you have to increase the number of bolts so and that which not too far away so you can just make it as 10 number of bolts you can try with 10 number of bolts you repeat the process the, the only thing that you need to notice here is that nb is 4 nb is 4 because the centroid is right at the level of these two bolts so these bolts are neither in tension or compression so only these four bolts are again four bolts are again 
in tension. So you have the NB value as 4. Substitute all the values. You get the value of phi Rn as 11.35. And you assumed 10 number of bolts. So the shear per bolt is 9.28, which is less, which is less than the, the strength. So you can use five number of bolts per vertical line. And this is the end of uh, design of combined uh, tension and shear. Uh, you have any question? Uh, no, doctor, it will be uploaded, right? Yeah, it will be uploaded. I think you have to go through you through the problem. It will be clear. I, it's not too difficult, except that the idea is you transfer them uh, to the centroid and then you work on it. You add up the shear, add up the moment. You get it. Okay, clear. Okay. So.